Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about arrays in C Sharp. We have already seen how to work with variables and we have talked about basic data types in C Sharp. We've also taken a look at how to use loops. Because of this, now is the perfect time to learn about arrays because you'll be able to understand them and use them to their fullest extent. Let's talk about what an array actually is. It's pretty much just a bunch of individual variables of the same type grouped together. They are mostly grouped into a single row. We are calling such arrays one-dimensional. Because they are the most common ones, let's focus on them first. We're going to take a look at multi-dimensional arrays in another tutorial, so subscribe and hit the bell button if you don't want to miss it. So as I've said, in this tutorial we're gonna focus on one-dimensional arrays and we're gonna be working with an array of strings, but arrays can be of any type you like. So we can declare an array like this. Square brackets after the name of the type specify that we want to declare an array, not just an ordinary variable. And well, just declaring an array is of no use, that's why we need to initialize it. If we want to initialize this array called my array, we have to write equals new string and square brackets 5. I've said that arrays are just a bunch of variables grouped together. We specify how many variables we want to group in the square brackets after the equal sign. Actually, what you see after the equal sign, the new keyword, is not used only for arrays, it's also used for creating other objects, so we will use it a lot in this series. We are really getting to the exciting new stuff. At the moment, our array of strings is empty. If we want to store something in it, we have to access individual elements inside it. We are doing it like this. Name of the array, so my array, square brackets, number of the index that we want to access, and we want to set it equal to strawberry. So this line of code sets the first element of the array to contain a string saying strawberry. Keep in mind that array elements are numbered from 0, not from 1. This means that the last element in our array, which has 5 elements, is at index 4, not 5. Let's assign values to the 4 remaining elements of the array. And let me tell you, this is quite exhausting to write. If you know what the array should contain from the start, you can use something called collection initializer. For this, we are going to create a new array. We are going to call it simple array. And here comes the part when we are going to use the collection initializer. So equals curly braces and write out the strings. So strawberry, blueberry and so on. Don't forget to end this with a semicolon. Notice that we do not need to specify the length of our array. And length means obviously the number of elements. We don't need to do this because the length is simply the number of strings inside the collection initializer. There are a lot of things we can do with arrays. We can simply get an element from it. So let's say that we want to print out the last element. So we simply write console.write line and we specify the name of the array and the index from which we should get the string. And when we run this, it should print out raspberry. Yep, correct. If we want to get all of the elements from the array, we can write a loop. The best loop we can use for this is the for loop. And be sure to watch the previous tutorial from this Learn C Sharp course if you haven't already. It's focused entirely on loops. So for int i equals zero, i is less than simple array dot length in i plus plus, so increment i. And we want to print out the string in the simple array, which is at the index of i. So console dot write line simple array i. Let's run this so that you can see the output. And as you can see, strawberry, blueberry, cranberry, gooseberry, and raspberry. All of these strings are printed out. And we could obviously use my array instead of simple array over here. The output would be exactly the same. Notice that we are starting from i being 0. And we are incrementing it if it's less than the length of the array. 
That's exactly what we need, because an array with 5 elements, in other words, an array with length of 5, has elements on indexes in range 0 to 4. And that's exactly the range at which this i counter variable is gonna be incremented by the for loop. The length that we are accessing on our array is a property, which is basically a glorified variable, or rather a field. You're going to learn about properties in the future tutorials, so you definitely have something to look forward to. In the next part, you're going to learn about multidimensional arrays, so subscribe and hit the bell button if you don't want to miss it. Be sure to check out the exercise on resocoder.com by clicking on the link in the description where you will be able to go through a few questions and coding assignments. Remember, practice makes perfect. I hope that this video helped you and that you learned something new. If you did, give this video a like and also share it. If you have any suggestions, questions or anything else to say, please leave a comment. Subscribe to this channel, hit the bell button, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.